Emily's unique engine, she had four leading wheels, two driving wheels and two wheels on the back. She's a very old design by a man called Mr. Patrick Sterling. She is Gordon, Flying Scotsman's Tornado and Spencer's predecessor. She used to work around Scotland a long time before she came to Sodor. One day, Emily was at Knapford when Gordon pulled in with the express. The big engine eyed her. Well, little Emily, pulling a branch line connection train, are we? At least it's not trucks. <coughs> well, at least my buffer print isn't in that ditch of the sheds. Emily was usually a good natured engine. When engines talked down to her, like James and Gordon, she grew angry. Sadly, it was a simmering anger that often led to trouble. <coughs> my, my, you have a fiery tongue today, Gordon said with a cough, and they headed back to the sheds. The next morning, Gordon wasn't feeling anything at all, as his crew checked him out and lubricated his parts. Well then. That. It's been about two weeks. Agreed. It should be about time for a clean out, and the coal hasn't been the best recently. Oh, the indignity. Why did this have to happen? I'll call Crowman's gate and get an engine to pull you to the works. Sorry, old boy. I'll miss the express. People will say what a bad railway this is. James or Henry can take it. They won't be here in time. So you can't handle the express this afternoon? No, sir. Why, why are you here, sir? I heard Gordon wheezing in the sheds last night and checked the rotation sheets. Well, he can't do the other expresses today, or any train. James is on goods. Henry's is taking trucks from Barrow to here now. Edward couldn't, and Emily... She can't do it! She handled the express on the main line for years, and hers was heavier. That was nearly 80 years ago. <coughs> Coaches were lighter then, plus she never tackled my hill with that load. What do you mean by that? Well, little Emily, I think you should look at the facts. Times have changed. Uh, oh. Notice my class replaced the Atlantics who replaced you. I'd be happy to take the express. I'll be at the platform. Exactly, Emily. Gordon, while I'm in here, I want you to think about your actions. As Sir Tottenham Hat left the shed, Gordon then felt regretful. He was proud of his heritage and didn't want a predecessor to be hurt taking the train. It was too late though to apologise. Hello Emily, what brings you here? Gordon is out of commission. All that hot air finally burned down, so who is calling the express? I am. Yes, now let's get ready. Rosie was worried as Emily departed quickly with the express, or tried to as the heavy coaches weighed her down. Rosie pushed from behind and Emily whistled in gratitude and said, Thanks for the help. Rosie whistled back and went about her duties. She was certain if Emily asked for help, she should be fine. Sadly, she forgot about James. This is when the trouble began. Hurry up! This is the express. What? The express being pulled by a branch chain? You've got to be joking. Of course not. I can pull it quite well. Obviously not. Look at you struggling. The starting is the most difficult part. However, I soar along these rails, unlike some engines. Really? Red James is now green. He's always mean. Laughed the trucks. Emily carried on her journey.
Emily fumed as she approached Wellsworth. It was a dangerous station to go fast into for the multiple sidings, thus engines must keep an eye open. If the signals did not allow them, they must slow and wait for a back engine as the amount of track after the station is not enough to gain enough speed for Gordon's Hill. Emily was too cross as she entered the yard. Her driver was too busy helping the fireman build up pressure while trusting her to warn him. In a siding, Boko smiled as the signal showed clear, then heard Emily come in and whistled. The signalman looked up from his desk, realised the express hadn't come through yet and changed the signals. Emily saw the first set of signals too late and put on the brakes. Her driver understood and applied them fully while turning off steam. She skidded over the sidings and slid to a stop. Boko watched in horror as he waited at the siding. Oh no. Although getting up Gordon's Hill would have been doable with effort, now it was almost impossible to go over the hill. She felt foolish for letting James get in her pipes. Is there anything I can do? I'm such a fool. Why? Gordon implied I was too slow and unreliable to pull the express. Then James insulted me. I was so angry I flew into the yard. Gordon means well. James can be angry with trucks. Although they can be both rough, the best way around it is to ignore them. Let me help. Can't finish my journey without you getting off my track. Boko coupled up to behind Emily and they started off again. Soon they were over Gordon's Hill and entering Marin Station. Thank you, Bogo. I owe you one. Not a problem. I'll remember that, by the way. I won't forget. As she sped away, Boko smiled and went to collect his fast goods to Barrow. Meanwhile, Emily quickly made her way to Kildane, which was their final stop. As she came up to Kildane, she began to apply her brakes and slow down. Her crew assisted and she came to the station tired. This is a slow express today. Well, it seems like they had trouble finding you a replacement. Look at the one we have, though. We're not too late, and she does gradual stops. It was nice to catch up on our sleep. Still, a few minutes faster would be nice. She'll do it. Indeed, Gordon can be rough at stops. This one at least remembers to slow down in front of stations. Emily smiled and then felt guilty. She'd forgotten the first rule of being in the railway. Rain or snow or quarrel, the railway must run with engines using all facilities. Then she smiled. Although she'd made errors earlier, it had given her an idea on how to run. She asked her crew over and they agreed. True, it would be slightly slower, but they would be more comfortable. Plus the express was often ready a few minutes before the stated starting time. As the guard blew his whistle a few minutes early, 
Emily slowly moved forward, gathering speed. The coaches were quiet. They were nervous about the older engine pulling the train. However, as Emily built up speed, the coaches understood that they didn't shake from their speed. Trickety chop, trickety chop, continue along as comfortable as you can, continue along as comfortable as you can, they sang. Emily smiled and said, Thank you very much. We'll be late, I'm sorry, but you won't be bruised. The coaches liked it, and so did the passengers. Ten minutes later, they arrived to a rude diesel. Your tin kettle should be scrapped. The diesel is surprised as passengers come up and thank Emily for a comfortable ride. It was nothing. Just the pride of a Scotsman to be comfortable. What would you know? You're probably a reproduction. I used to pull the Flying Scotsman before the C1s were built. Why don't you say that? Let me take a picture. I don't announce it often. Engines who have too much pride or vanity get their due here. The Diesel looked at her, feeling a small amount of respect. For the final express run, Emily performed the same strategy from the start. Passengers all cheered her at Knapford while Rosie whistled in applaud. Then she wearily came into the sheds. Although she had done it well and made up a lot of lost time, she felt exhausted. Hello Emily, I wish to say something. Let me. Today I broke a personal rule of mine. Never get involved with the quarrels that spring up on this railway. I let it get in the way of my work. The other engines listened as she explained, and as the old engine ended, she turned her eyes to Gordon and said, I made your passengers late for the morning run. Even though Sir Tom Hatt said nothing, I caused a lot of difficulty for silly reasons. Emily, you're a strong engine. Of that there is no doubt, as you've pulled 400 tons of coaches from Knapford to Barrow. However, I caused this delay from my earlier comments. We both got ahead ourselves. Emily looked down as the other engine smiled. It was rare for Gordon to apologise without getting into a mess first. It was nice to skip the middleman. The passengers complimented your ethic and comfort. How did you do that? I thought you would know by now. Well, I admit I focus a lot on the fast train aspect. When Spencer came, I felt threatened. Sadly, I seem to have forgotten what that train is for. As Emily explained what she did while Gordon and the other express engines listened intently, as she finished, James spoke up. 
Well, that's good. However, it is a fast train. You remember that quite well. Every time you take the express, the crew brings bootlaces and newspapers. What? Despite being on the railway for some years, Emily was still not a part of the NWR Society of Sodor, meaning certain saying like stick yourself in a tunnel meant nothing to her. I'll explain after I return tomorrow. Us tender engines need to rest. Emily agreed and soon the shed had nothing but sleeping engines, save for Gordon who smiled at his distant cousin. Thank you, Emily. They went to sleep. Although he was proud of his Gresley heritage, he remembered the other railway builders had proud heritage, and today Emily had shown the pride held by those of Patrick Serling. He was proud of his cousin.